So this video that you're about to see really surprised me. It really did. So Julian Castro is honestly just a standard establishment Democrat. And um, he went on MSNBC and he had an opinion on the 2024 election, which is super out of left field, totally unexpected. He's talking about Biden, talking about, you know, his chances in 2024. And my guess is this will surprise you as much as it surprised me. I'm not as confident as a lot of people in Washington and the Democratic establishment seem to be that Joe Biden is going to do well against Donald Trump. It really? is a little bit concerning. Yeah, I mean, I think it's worrisome when you have a president that does have a record uh, on the economy and other things that that folks can be proud of, that he can be proud of. And yet you have him polling either right about tied in the margin of error with Trump or behind Trump in the ABC News Washington Post poll a few days ago. And that's related to concerns that Democrats and some independents have with the president and something that his, his team has been unable to actually assuage the fears and the doubts that Democrats have. You cannot ignore the fact that more than half of Democrats in several polls over the last year have said that they wanted somebody other than Joe Biden to run. And right now, I think that the Democratic establishment is sort of trying to wipe that away, just sweep that under the rug. Uh, I'll give you a good, good example of that. The DNC have a lot of respect for him, like a lot of the people there. But then deciding that there will be no primary, no debate, I think they actually need to give Joe Biden a chance to get out there and show the American people what he can do, that mm. he can run that campaign and, you know, beat whoever runs in the primary, uh, whoever those opponents are, uh, even if it's just RFK Jr. and Marianne Williamson. I don't think that they want to wait until the fall of 2024 to have those debates. Here's the reality. When you have a tough primary season, the conventional wisdom is, oh my goodness, that hurts your candidate going into the general election because there was just a lot of infighting. Oh my God. I don't believe in that theory. I believe in the theory that if you have a tough primary season, it's almost like working out a lot leading into a marathon or something. Like you wouldn't just do a marathon without having practiced for a marathon. You would have to work up to it. Start out by running half a mile, then you run a mile, then, you know, after a week or two, you kick that up to mile and a half or two miles, and then eventually, when all's said and done, you run your 10-mile marathon or whatever the hell it is. But you don't just jump into the 10-mile marathon because you'll face plant and you won't be able to make it, and you'll be last. <laughs> you'll be huffing and puffing. So it's like exercise to some physical event, right? Like you would want to exercise before the physical event. You would want to have debates with other people before you go into a debate with Donald Trump, right? Or whoever the Republican candidate would happen to be, although it's almost very likely to be Donald Trump unless Ron DeSantis has some sort of miracle, you know, second surge, right? So that's the philosophy I believe in. It looks like Julian Castro believes in that as well because I don't think Julian Castro supports Marion Williamson or RFK. He's still, at the end of the day, a corporate Democrat. And he remember, he was the guy in 2020, I think he ran for president. He ran for president, LOL, by the way, and he was on the debate stage and uh, Biden famously said something and then Julian responded and Biden contradicted himself and changed his position. And Julian was like, whoa, 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 you said the opposite two minutes ago. Did you just forget what you said two minutes ago? And so that was the first moment that I can remember of like other Democrats, establishment Democrats going, well, hold on now, man. I don't think this guy's up to the challenge. I think he's lost a step. In fact, I think he's lost two or three steps. I think mentally he's not as sound as he once was. And that's a problem. Maybe we don't want this guy being our standard bearer going against the Republican Party. Now, by the way, keep it real, it ended up working. Biden ended up beating Donald Trump in the 2020 election. But look, I will say this. Trump against Biden would give Biden a better shot than any other Republican against Trump. I think if it was DeSantis, even if it was somebody boring as hell like Nikki Haley, I think they would have a better chance against Biden than Trump does against Biden. But having said that, I still think Biden would perform weaker than almost any other Democrat at this point, right? I mean, maybe him and Kamala would do similar, <laughs> but I think like even Pete at this point would probably do better. Certainly Marianne Williamson would do better. So I, there are real issues here, even putting aside the policy, which most of my critiques on Biden are policy focused. It's still, you know, the fact that 
He believes in the neoliberal framework. He's still a centrist at his heart. He's done some things that I definitely agree with, but not nearly as many as he would need to do to get reelected, right? Uh, you know, his numbers for an incumbent are abysmal. And so here you have, even from inside the House of the Democratic establishment, they're like, well, hold on now. Because the other thing is, and this is the most important point, guys, Man, the Democratic Party, the establishment types love to suck themselves off about, we believe in democracy, and the Republicans are against democracy. And we all know this because this is the exact campaign they ran correctly, pointing out how Donald Trump was doing the stop the steal stuff, the rigged election stuff, the overturn the results stuff. He made the phone call, five me 11,000 votes. And we all know that. We all saw that. So yes, Donald Trump is quite literally anti-democracy. He would have done a coup if, if if a couple pieces fell slightly differently in 2020, he would have done a coup. He was trying to do a coup in many ways, although it was a weak effort, right? So we know he's anti-democracy, but you can't then turn around and say, we're super pro-democracy, that's why you have to support us. And by the way, totally lock down the process. Marianne Williamson doesn't exist. RFK doesn't exist. We're not going to do any debates, any discussions, any town halls. We're going to act like they don't exist. We'll have our lackeys in the media do the exact same and be our propaganda arm by not giving any coverage to Biden's challengers. No, that is flat out disingenuous, dishonest, and disrespectful to the American people who deserve a choice, especially when some polls show 70% of Democrats want a different choice, right? Or what was it? 70% of the country uh, wants a choice other than Biden. I mean, come on, man. You got Julian Castro who's out there like, hey, dog, this is getting a little sad. He's right. He's spitting. He's definitely right about this. So if you're losing people like Julian Castro, guys, here's the most important point. In order to win the Democratic primary, you need normie Democrats to vote for you. On top of independents, on top of moderates, etc. On top of people to the left of the Democratic Party, they need to vote for you in order to win the Democratic primary. Julian Castro saying this is a good example that normie Democrats are truly open to a non-Biden option. Well, you guys know me. I wear it on my sleeve. I have my preferred candidate, and she's Marianne Williamson, and I think she deserves more coverage on CNN, MSNBC. I think she deserves to get her name and her message out there more, and hopefully it creates a ripple effect. Hopefully you have a, you know, a wave of support that we can ride here. But uh, they're pulling out all the stops, everything they can, to try to snuff, snuff out this movement in the crib. There's no doubt about that. And the fact that the media and the Democratic establishment are this brazen in their hypocrisy when it comes to believing in democracy, I would say it's surprising, but we all know how they act, and it's really not. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.